the identity on top here it's called a double angle identity for the cosine function so the cosine of twice an angle is going to be cosine squared minus sine squared uh, the one on bottom is the the first Pyth pythagorean identity which is based on just visualizing a right triangle on the unit circle where we defined cosine as the x-coordinate of a point on the unit circle and sine as a y-coordinate of a point on the unit circle. So some, some extremely useful identities can be derived by combining these. And I, I do recommend knowing the derivation just because it increases your fluency with manipulating trig identities. Um, so the plan here is that I'm going to, in the top formula, replace one of these trig functions uh, with a substitution from the bottom formula. So maybe I'll do this, I'll get rid of the sine function first. So from the bottom formula, I have the sine squared of, a, of an angle is really one minus cosine squared. So then I'm gonna sub that in to the top formula. And I get cosine two theta is cosine squared theta minus the quantity one minus cosine squared theta clean things up on the right hand side and I have cosine squared minus negative cosine squared or another way to look at it is I distribute a factor of negative one into that binomial that gives me two cosine squared theta minus one then I'm going to add one to both sides and then divide by that coefficient two and I end up with one half one plus cosine two theta is equal to cosine squared theta in other words, cosine squared theta is one half one plus cosine two theta. All right, this is an extraordinarily useful identity for calculus because an integral of the square of a cosine function, we don't know what to do with it. But if we use this identity, then it's just the integral of an easy piece here and an easy piece here that requires thinking about the chain rule backwards a little bit. Uh, but it makes these sorts of integrals doable if you remember these identities. Let's go the other way. Cosine squared theta is 1 minus sine squared theta. Go up here and replace cosine squared. And I get cosine 2 theta is 1 minus sine squared theta minus sine squared theta. Um, and that means cosine squared 2 theta is 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. And I want to solve for sine squared theta. Uh, the easiest way to do this in my mind is to just add that 2 sine squared theta term to both sides. Subtract this cosine 2 theta from the left hand side. And I arrive at another very useful identity. Sine squared theta is 1 half 1 minus cosine. 2 theta. Again, the utility of this in calculus is that when you run into an integral with an even power of the sine function, you're just stuck. But if you apply this identity, you get down to, to something where each piece is pretty easy to guess the antiderivative.